So this is going to be the first on a few videos about trigonometric equations or just trig equations for short. So the reason these are a bit different from normal equations is instead of having one answer, you have multiple answers, okay? So we have to look for general solutions, which are solutions that give us every single answer just in one line kind of, okay? So there's loads you could write out or you can just write the general solution. So you'll see what I mean now in a second. So for an example, we're going to look at cos of theta is equal to a half, okay? So this is a simple enough trigonometric equation. So if we want to solve this, we know we're going to say theta then is equal to the inverse cos of a half, okay? And that means that theta is going to be equal to 60 degrees, yeah? Um, so we think 60 degrees is our answer. Every time we sub 60 in, we should get uh, a half. So that's what the solution means. If you sub 60 into theta here, your answer should be a half. And you'll find that's true, okay? So that should be the only answer if it was a normal equation. But for trigonometric equations, there's a few different answers. So say if we try cos of 300 degrees, if you put that into your calculator, you're also going to get a half, okay? If you try cos of 420 degrees, put it into your calculator, you're also going to get a half. And again, if you try cos of 660 degrees, you're also going to get a half, okay? So that's the problem with trigonometric equations. There's there are loads and loads and loads. They're actually infinite amount. This keeps going on and on forever uh, of possible answers. So the reason, I'll just scribble it out here quickly. So here's a graph of cos of theta or cos of x, so the cos graph, which we did in the last two videos, this yellow thing here. And say this point here is a half, okay? Uh, so what this basically what this uh, equation means is it's asking us where does this dotted line here at a half bump into the, the graph cos of theta. So basically anywhere that they bump into each other, it's a possible answer. So that means, say this spot here, this spot here, this spot here, this spot here, that this is our angle 60, this is our 300, this is our 420, and this is our 660, okay? So each one of these, and that, that that's gonna keep going forever and ever and ever. There's gonna be infinite amount of uh, places where the red line hits the yellow line, okay? So all of those are gonna be possible answers, even some of the minus answers here. Uh, they're always going to be answers as well, okay? So that's why it's difficult to solve trigonometric equations, but there is a pattern as well. So if you look at 60 and 420, there's a difference of 360 degrees in between them. If you look at 300 and 660, there's a difference of 360 degrees, and that's because the period of cos theta is 360 degrees. So basically, we're going we're gonna to come up with a solution that will let us solve for all of these answers, which is one line. So that solution is going to take the form of, we're going to have theta is equal to 60 degrees, right over here, or 300 degrees, okay? Because there, there are first two answers, and they're less than 360, so it's always going to be like this, there's always going to be the first two answers, okay? Plus n multiplied by 360, or plus n multiplied by 360. So this may seem weird at first, but n here is equal to, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dot, 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 okay? So basically, n is any integer, okay? So integer means any whole number, positive whole number. Um, yeah, and that's basically our solution. So I'll just talk through it in a second. This is because if you sub any number into n, so if it's 0, uh, if you sub uh, 0 into n, then your answers are going to be theta is equal to 60 or 300, which we have here, yeah? If you sub 1 into n, then uh, this is going to be 60 plus 360, which is 420. Uh, if you sub 1 into n on this side, you get 300 plus 360, which is 660. And if we want to keep going, you can sub uh, 2 into n here. So if you sub 2 into n, theta is equal to 60 plus 2 multiplied by 360. So that, that's going to be theta is equal to 60 plus 720, and that's going to be equal to 780 degrees. So if you want to sub that into your calculator, cos of 780, your answer will be a half. So no matter what number you put in as n, your answer will still be a half. So this is our solution here. This one line here gives us every single possible answer where cos of theta is equal to a half every time that red line hits the yellow line. Does that make sense? So we're going to go through it in a more kind of rigorous method in the next video. So you do, you do have to be kind of comfortable with the general idea of 
general solutions because there's loads and loads and loads of them. This is the solution depending on how many ends you want to put in. So um, yeah, that's the best I can explain it. So just watch the video again. We're gonna go through a method in the next video. If it doesn't make loads and loads of sense, then you can just learn the method off. It's not too hard uh, and you should be fine for the exam anyway.